Hello everybody, welcome to Bar Zone. Um, today uh, we're going to talk about the reconstructing the uh, day that Anthony Catalano, the crime scene, we want to call it, the day he was missing. Missing person Anthony Catalano has been missing since March 25, 2009. There's a missing per person flyer. We're putting new ones up. So that's what he looked like. This was taken at a wedding by a dear friend of his. Uh, this was taken Valentine's Day in 2009, like a month before. That's the way he last looked, basically. Okay. He, I don't know if he shows it here, but uh, he he got thinner than this. This is a little bit younger. He was a little bit more heavy set, so said that he might have had a drug addiction. What I wanted to do is reconstruct the the day he was missing. Okay, what I'm showing you here once again is uh, he lived, it was last seen coming out of his condo, which is 8747 Bren Mar, Chicago, across from Norwich. We see a few trees, a winding road coming from a garage. There's a camera that picks it up. And then he was seen going out with the camera driving off, okay? Okay, again, here's another part of his condo, right there, out of the road. Okay, and um, here's the front of his condo. Here's a driving area. His car was brought back. Okay, what I mean by reconstructing the crime scene, a few questions arise when a car is brought back. We don't really know that. That somebody surmises and just left it like that the way it was. Well, first of all, to argue that point, and anybody's welcome to have an argue back is um here's the thing okay if somebody drove the car which is around Cumberland Higgins that area of Bren Mawr 8747 somebody you know how many cameras and somebody would have saw from the cameras you think the cops are stupid that they wouldn't have looked at all those cameras on both sides that's right by the expressway so where would they bring it back from okay and reconstructing the crime scene for me means that going over what happened, it was left strategically where the cameras would pick it up, who put it there, okay? I'm thinking that either way that Tony Catalano knew the perpetrator, or per one, maybe, maybe it's one person, and um, got in a heated argument okay now these are what psychics told me okay I think that he strategically parked it himself because I was told recently that he had a few friends from the past people from he knew from college he went to I think Western College something like that and um, a lot of people were saying his past habits were that he liked to go hang out in the woods okay so that's something that in his past history in high school or college days just what he liked to do so he had strategic places that he went to and did, okay? So the thing is, is that doesn't the cameras see who brought it back, even if it was Tony? So here's my theory, reconstructing the crime scene, that in the parking lot, whatever it was, where I left it, it was a Mercedes, that the person, he got in a heated argument, and they grabbed him out of the car, and that's why they wiped the fingerprints off. And there, I happen to know of a family member that just has wild temper and the person's like 400 pounds, okay, that somebody he had financial transactions with, okay. So reconstructing the crime scene, it seems like maybe one person could have it. Now, I had psychics say, we're always saying three people did it. Um, based on this person's temper, worse than Joe Messino's, is, is I think that one person could did it, could have did it. Um, what I'm saying is that it takes one hefty person because Tony Catalano was thin as a rail. He was skinny and sick. Okay. I wish I could have other people that kn knew him and seen him. I mean, I've talked to him about it. They recognize the pictures and stuff like that. But um, you know, they don't want to get involved whatever they come forward and prove to see how skinny he was there's real skinny okay the thing is is that he could have been picked up because he was a toothpick 
by one huge person that he could have gotten a fight with. And that's what I was told. What psychics were telling me, and they kept saying the same thing over and over again. But variations, or some of them were saying he left and turned his back. He got an argument, he owed money, it was over a large amount of money, he was doing a large money dealing, okay? He was into a lot of stuff. Uh, I, uh, from what I was told, there was, um, he was on probation from a year or two back from something, uh, some sort of um, kilo bust or something like that. Maybe his dealers did it, but I don't think they, they were, I think uh, the way the car was left there in place, he met somebody that he knew, okay? And, um, you know, I feel that he had a lot of anger inside with somebody that in his personal life that he might have got in an argument with. So I feel that there's somebody that knows where that body is and that person, if the cops would take the time and uh, maybe that person will lead him to the body, I don't know. But I don't think that person had anybody else. So that leaves Giacchino off the hook. I think that the person just got in an argument with Tony and it was overheated money and uh, one person is stealing from the next and blah 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 and that person just offed with him because they had a bad temper, okay? And the um, thing is, is that, you know, why haven't the cops come forward and said if whoever they saw bring the car back? Now, that wasn't said. I never got that information, but I wish I could figure that one out because that would be our culprit. And then if they know who the car brought the car back, they got the guy. So the, I don't think it, was, it ever locked. So therefore, reconstructing the car scene the body maybe got in a fight, he got grabbed, thrown in the trunk. I heard that he was calling somebody on the phone, family member, five times. I'm thinking he's in the trunk and he's calling the family member or whoever it was. or He was calling people. Whoever it was that was driving <laughs> that car that he was in the trunk of. And I'm, I'm going to tell you something. I think that because, you know, he was a drug dealer, he was afraid to call 911. Had he have called 911, he could have saved his own life. That's what I think. Reconstructing the crime scene. Okay, so there's a couple of tidbits there. If anybody has anything else that they want to add, come on in. Um, here's what I'm. Um, my email is barzone at mail .com. Okay, I want to show you something interesting. See that one right there? See that one? August 2nd. It says, and this is my website, just so you know. You see how it says Anthony Tony Catalano? There's something that I want to show you with that. Interesting. See the color of that flag? If I can get this working now, give me a minute. All right. Now you see down there. Oh, damn. Okay, sorry. Okay, oops. Spanish. They, oh, it's. CAN TV Services Venezuela. But if we look down there, it says Venezuela Concordat Distrito Federal. What are your thoughts on that? Okay, let me put the camera back. Say a couple more tidbits before I go. Okay, reconstructing the crime scene. What did we just say that he had? Uh, and the psychics were telling me this, that he had, he was dealing with hundreds of thousands of dollars, right? Well, where would it come from? Or what kind of drug history? Well, what would it be? Maybe some of these South American companies, I mean, um, continents. A lot of times I'll get the Colombia, District of Federal. Mexico, the other time I got Mexico, I think uh, last week. The thing is, is that you've got to understand something. Why are they, and, and before they've typed Tony Catalano, why are they looking for the District Federal of Venezuela and these other companies? Why do they type in there, in that area, that whole area, Tony Catalano? Think about it. Now reconstruct the crime scene in your head. So where would kilos of grass come from if he got busted for it or some probation for it? Where would all of this come from any drugs 
Okay. Okay, so that's food for thought. This is the bar zone. Thank you.